and welcome. Today we're going to be editing a sunset photo together. Ideally, this photo that you are bringing along in this process is a landscape photo and not necessarily a portrait because this is more for landscape photos. We'll cover portraits and sunset portraits in the future, but for now, this is a landscape specific tutorial. So jumping right in, this is a panorama that I took when I was out in Utah in 2020. Just keep in mind that this is a panorama and not just one singular photo. So when I zoom in and there's an insane amount of detail, that's why I don't have some sort of phase one camera or anything like that. So the first thing that we're gonna do is balance out our histogram. Get everything into a place where you can see all of the information present in the scene. This is something I do with all of my photos, but with a photo like this, which appears fairly underexposed to start, this is really important. So you know exactly what steps to take next. So I'm gonna edit my histogram directly. Pulling up our shadows, our midtones, our highlights, being careful not to clip anything just yet. This is a strategy that I like to use in a lot of my photos, but the first thing that I'm going to do once our histogram is looking like a nice bell is push our highlights down, or I suppose pull them down, almost all the way. Actually, all the way, all the way. Then I'm going to push my whites all the way up until just about clipping. And I'm gonna do the same thing with the shadows. Pushing our shadows up just a touch until they're as exposed as they can be, and then pushing our blacks down until they're just about clipping. This is giving us an insane amount of dynamic range in our image. Already you can see there's quite a difference. But if we zoom in on the sky here, and I do this, you can see the values and exposure in the sky aren't really changing too much outside of the shadows becoming slightly more exposed. That's what we want. This initial stage is just to see what we have. So let's see what we have. Let's let this fill up our screen and we'll do a nice little scroll through. You can see this guy is wildly dramatic and there's actually way more detail in the shadows than we had initially thought. This is one of the perks of shooting a panorama. You get a lot more information in areas that you didn't really think had too much information in them, like these shadows. So now that I can look at my image and kind of decide where to go from here, what I'm going to do is try to do this scene as much justice as I can. By that I mean, I'm gonna be sticking to my basics panel for 99% of the work I'm going to do to this image. Because of that, my colors are gonna remain accurate and hopefully my light and dramaticism of the scene is going to remain accurate to what I saw on that day. Our next step, once we've gotten this image into a place where we can observe it uh, accurately, is going to be going into detail. So as you see, there's quite a bit of noise in this image, but because this image is so large, at first glance, you don't really see it. Because of that, the noise reduction that I'm going to be doing to this image is going to be fairly minimal, but I'm going to be offsetting it with some sharpening just to make sure no detail is really lost. So let's go to a really dark portion of this image where this noise is quite noticeable right around here. And let's pull that noise out just a touch, nothing too insane. Again, this is such a large image that this noise is honestly pretty inconsequential. Right about there is okay. But as you see, we've really lost some of the sharpness that was there. So I'm going to introduce a little bit more sharpness. First, making sure to mask what I want to be sharpened. The white areas, when I click Alt on my keyboard, but I believe it's Option for Max, Option click this masking slider. You can see the white areas are the edges that the sharpening tool is going to be targeting and the black areas are being forgotten about. Toggling our detail slider, we can see we've gotten rid of some of that noise and retained our sharpness. So this is an amazing starting point. The image already looks really good and if I wanted, I could probably print this right now with no issues. However, I'm noticing some halation and weird things going on on the edges of these cliffs which I don't really want to be happening. So I'm going to go into my lens corrections. I'm going to do remove chromatic aberration and already that 
has done a fantastic job. I'm just going to zoom into 400% so you can see exactly what's going on. There it is with the chromatic aberration. There it is without. One thing that I want you to think about when you're editing your sky images, especially when it's a sky-centered image, is what's the character of the sky? This guy is very dramatic. We have an incredible sunset going on over here, there's a thunderstorm happening over here, and then blue hour, it seems, is starting over here. This sky is really dramatic, so I'm gonna make my edit cater to that as much as I can. If you're trying to preserve the realism of the image, it's important that you cater to the sky's strengths rather than trying to make it something that it isn't. Now I'm gonna go back to my basics panel and really play around with the histogram and see exactly what I can get away with. What I'm a fan of is bright highlights that punch. I want the bright part of the sky over here to be brighter than the dark part of the sky over here to add some dynamism to this image. To do that, I'm going to weirdly drop my exposure so that I have wiggle room in my highlights. What you'll see, what I mean by that is pulling those back up and then pumping my exposure one more time. Now that area is quite blown out, so I'll pull those whites back down. As I'm editing, I'm keeping in mind that later on I'm going to be throwing on masks. What we're trying to do right now is get the sky in a good place so that we don't have to add too many masks to it, and that most of our masking happens on the ground where there's detail. Okay. This sky is looking exactly what I want it to look like at the end of this image, so I'm going to stop messing with our basics panel. Now I'm going to head into our masks. I'm going to add a linear gradient to the bottom of this image, trying to get that red overlay to cover just about darkest values. Now we're going to refine this by intersecting with a luminance range. The luminance range is going to be all the dark stuff. And I'm going to make it a little bit more selective about what it's doing and stopping right about there. Perfect. Now I'm going to get rid of our overlay. What you've noticed is I've selected the shadows. Because of that, when I start increasing the exposure in this area, I'm not going to edit the exposure directly because that looks wild. I'm instead going to edit the shadows, which if you fully crank it doesn't look great. However, right around there's okay all this stuff is real baby steps just one step at a time pulling out information where we can leaving information as it is in other places this image is getting a little bit better and so I'm going to throw on yet another mask and this one is going to be a less refined linear gradient that let's our eyes believe the shadow edit that we just made. And what I mean by that is if you have a dark area and the shadows are unnaturally bright, like I just made them, but the rest of the image, or the rest of the dark area, isn't bright enough to compensate for that or to justify those shadows being that bright, it's gonna look weird and unnatural, which it kinda does right now, to be honest. And then I'm gonna go into my shadows mask and pull down the amount slider right about there. This is looking really good in my opinion. I think this looks pretty solid. There's nice detail in the cliffs. There's nice detail in the ground. One issue I have with this is that there isn't a super solid separation between the foreground, the middle ground, and the sky. And because of that, I'm going to do a little bit more heavy-handed masking. And because of that, I'm gonna be adding some more masks into this image. I'm gonna make parts of this foreground a bit darker so that they can stand out from this kind of bright middle ground. And to do that, I'm just going to brush gently. Keeping in mind, I'm not trying to darken already dark areas. All right. And our final kind of detail management here is to feather this mask into everything else. So I said I'm not going to drag this brightness into the shadows. However, because this isn't a perfectly placed mask, it's going to look weird if everything is getting brighter except the super, super dark areas. One more mask. 
maybe not one more, but another mask onto our cliff in the middle, making sure to get those edges. We don't want this weirdly bright in some areas and weirdly dark in others. And only a little bit of brightening over here because we can see it naturally gets darker as it gets further away from the sunset, which makes sense. So right about there, pulling up the shadows because again, these are shadow values. Let's just pull them up all the way, see what we can do. Let's drop, let's actually increase our whites slightly, slightly being all the way, highlights, and pulling our shadows back down. Right around there. Now this is nothing, and there's a little something, something going on now. Perfect. Well, let's drop that a little bit more, probably right around there. Okay, so the last thing I'm gonna to do to this image is create a sense of motion. And I'm gonna do that by adding one more linear gradient from right to left, darkening the image. The reason I do that is because it's dark blue over here and bright orange over here. I want the eye to travel across the image. One more linear gradient, just like this. Now I'm gonna be darkening the highlights and midtones of this, so darkening the highlights and midtones are controlled by the exposure slider right around there and there's nothing just a little something something going on and I'm gonna drag that out to about here our last step is going to be dragging one more time as much information out of this image as we possibly can with our basics panel. All right, and that's our final image. Notice we don't have any clipping in any values. Everything on our histogram is looking nice and balanced. Nothing is clipping. Nothing is looking funky for whatever reason. It looks really, really solid. I hope you can take away three different things from this video. One, expose for the sky if the sky is your subject. Number two, edit to the image's strengths. So, this image is purple, it's dramatic, and it's really, really big. So, I played to its strengths. I kept it purple, I kept it dramatic, and I kept it big. I didn't try and crop it down, I didn't try and make it green, and I didn't try and make it less contrasty or give it a aesthetic that it wouldn't have had in person. One caveat to this is that I tried to make this realistic and not kind of throw my own style onto this. If you're trying to do that, then ignore everything I just said. Don't worry about it. And number three is remember to rely on the basics, the masking, and your image detail recovery. I hope this video was helpful and it helps you push your images going forward further. Remember that if the process is fun and if you have a good time making the image and you have a good time looking at the image, that's all that matters. See ya.